It's easy to dismiss the orcs as brutish, but that demeanor masks a cunning and cruelty well suited for warfare. Their weapons likewise seem brutish, but make no mistake, they know their purpose. One sharp blow to the head will split your skull, whether it comes from Gondorian steel or orcish pig iron. This mace is far older than what we usually find on the battlefield. I doubt the orc who stole it knew of its heritage. The last king of Gondor, Aena, challenged the Witch King himself in the heart of Angmar. Armored for war, not ceremony, he left his crown behind when he rode to his fate. We hold it in trust for the day when a king of Gondor will return to wear it. Though we need a future king with enough sense not to confront the Witch King alone. You stop that! This crown is worthy of a king. Ah, but your people have spurned their kings, have they not? Jack! These! I believe this plate is of Easterling manufacture. The ceramic and the style of decoration is a sort unknown to me or anyone I've shown it to. I know that the Easterlings from beyond the Sea of Rune have never been friends to Gondor, and their war chariots and wing wagons are fearsome indeed. But I should like to meet one up close when battle is not at hand. No matter how fierce they are, they're still men, not Uruks or other minions of the Dark Lord. The Easterlings, stranger even than the Herodrim of the South, but just as vulnerable to entreaties from Sauron. Escape. 
He called me his pet, and I indulged him. He praised my hunger, though he called it passion. We were as one. Now I live in darkness at the edges of his empire. I explore the web of fate, a silent witness to his growing power, his everlasting dominion. It is time for me to come into the light. A spider always lies in wait, but for what? What was that noise? esteem delicate finery in all their arts, and the crystals in this artifact glow softly, even in a pitch black room. I know this firsthand because I'd often sneak into the great hall and read by crystal light when everyone thought I was safely in bed. Wipe them all out. Make the world a little... Finest crystal found in roughest Mordor. Fascinating. Surprise the orcs didn't smash it just to hear the sound. Sneaking around, torching our supplies. We've got to stop them. Yeah, we need to catch them all, put that. <laughs> By reading the history and peoples of Gondor, every child receives countless lessons in our realm's history. Our kings and heroes, our battles and triumphs. Doubly so for those of us who grew up on Gondor's frontiers. The teachers meant well. They were trying to inspire us. But all the tales of Gondor remind us how exposed we were to the threat of Mordor. Coming, eh? Gondor's history. Triumph in one chapter, despair in the next. Concern yourself with the chapter yet unwritten. I lost the chop heads! Did you hear that? 
Iberia. To an orc, grog is strong drink for their bellies, but it's also medicine for their wounds, and so combustible that it may even be fuel for their war machines. Few Gondorians dare drink it, lest we start to behave like the orcs. Still, it is worth studying. Baronor has some ideas about a poison that, when mixed with grog, can disable or even kill the strongest orc. Oof, this grog smells foul. Ah, but to an Uruk it is ambrosia. I chose the form of a spider because I wanted to walk the web of fate, to weave its strands. The Dark Lord chose something else. He chose a shell of cold, dark steel. He became a machine. A hollow man. From the beginning, Sauron was a creature built for war. Then it falls upon us to undo him. Hydro. Deal, Rock! 
The pink skins would never see it coming. Dad! Gondor's preferred order of battle with variations is a chart depicting how an army should be organized, from the frontline infantry to the cooks and teamsters in the rear. Whenever I study it, I'm amazed at what it takes to send an army to war. Details down to the number of cobblers and farriers for each column of soldiers. Such matters of supply seem mundane, until you're under siege, desperately fighting on quarter rations. Then you're eager to pay attention to logistics. Take this! The structure of Gondor's army, from general to foot soldier. A structure the orcs will cast down the moment they set foot in Gondor. The Sea of Nuln is home to beasts we can scarcely comprehend, but from time to time clues about their existence wash up on the shore. Our patrols found this fossilized squid beak years ago. If it is proportional to the smaller squids that fishermen sometimes catch, the sea creature would be several hundred feet long. Such a monster is the stuff of nightmares, proof that this world hides horrors far worse than the orcs. What a beast this must have been. And I doubt it was the last of its kind. Ethel never had the grand dramas and pageantry of Minas Tirith itself, but we had simple arts like music to give us the solace of home. When all around us lies in shadow, a simple folk song or pleasing dance was a ray of sunshine. I wonder if such music will ever be heard again. You're lucky you didn't kill 
You know, I'd always meant to learn the lute. Your hands aren't meant for music, Talion. They have a more serious purpose. I flew from ruin, and made a home for myself in the caves. I was here before the first stone of Barador, and I will survive its fall. I have come to enjoy the darkness. My brood has grown. They extend my reach to Mirkwood, and beyond. They bring me gifts, as I do. She wishes an empire of her own. I sense she has had her fill of empire building. mistake. This artifact, a chunk of Moonstone, was our last acquisition before the Orcs came. A scout found it still smoldering out in the fields where it fell to Earth from the moon overhead. 
I am far from superstitious. But even I wonder whether this bit of fallen moonstone was meant to serve as an ill omen for the disaster that followed. An ill omen from the skies. Mina Seafield was doomed long before this moonstone fell to earth. Roger. Some orcs are self-styled marauders who crave riches more than other orcs. Greed, not bloodlust, motivates them, and unlike most other orcs, they wear jewelry such as this ring to mark their status. We obtain this ring from a dead marauder, so we've no idea of its history, though it seems Numenorian. If only we knew where the marauders find treasures like this ring. There's so much we could learn. <laughs> 